Alright guys, welcome back to episode 2 of our Let's Review for Tyranny. Last episode we gave the game, uh, the, that particular episode, an 8.5. This episode we're going to see where it right. takes us. Starting from scratch, every episode kind of got to keep an open mind. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, Vendrian Guard Heavy Bronze Greaves. I kind of want to avoid stuff that has negative stats. What's this? Weapons and armor are stacked with precision on this transport cart. Every spear, every spear is honed and oiled, ready for battle. Okay, so let's kind of do a little exploring here. Several skulls bleached by the sun and picked clean by carrion birds are spiked on a roughly hewn post. It is only. Okay, so that is pretty interesting. Can't do that. Uh, so let's Honest. just go this way then. Not very many places, nooks and crannies that you can for sure explore, but we will go ahead and keep on. Torn banners of scratched out icons of the disfavored. The army's original symbol uh, has been lost to history, to history and graven. Okay, so let's keep on going and see what's going on over here. Stow your weapons, or we find out how long a man can scream before hitting the ravine down below. Cornered between a precipitous drop and a band of angry soldiers, the Oathbreaker Warriors holds a disfavored officer at knife point. Skewer him, worry not for me. Graven Ash will, pro will protect. Uh, by the Archon Graven Ash, okay. The disfavored officer winces, blood seeping from the seams of his bracers and curious. You heard them. You heard the man. The plainly, he plainly invited you to use that little blade of yours. What are you waiting for? Your permission from your pimp? <laughs> Let's see, this blade, with a jerk of the knife, he slices off a clump of Dastrus matted, Dastrus's matted hair. If you're so eager to see your ally dead, step closer. Ah, oh, well, I think the reason we don't have the athletic skill is because we don't actually, we, we're a little debuffed because we died on the end of the last episode, and when you die, you have like a debuff set on you. You're wounded, as it were. We have to help Dastrus. You heard Dastrus let him die. And you might know the end of a cell. And I'm sure that cell will have daily visits from the Scarlet Chorus. Cads, thirsty for a bit of torture. He shakes his head, pulling the captive closer. I'd rather take my chances with death. Mocking Blaze. Now that's unfair, I assure you. It's more a hunger for torture than a thirst. But you are correct, we have no charity left for those who have laughed at our mercy once before. The blood chanter slams her staff on the ground, curling her fingers with a quivering hand. If you fools won't deal with him, maybe I will. Uh, let's see, whatever you're thinking, don't. Not until Commander Dastrus is safe. Well, I wish I had the athletic skill to do that. Let's see, well, I think what we do here is attack. You have gained Wrath with Scarlet Chorus, you've gained Favor with the Disfavor. Tyrell dashes the, the blade across Dastra's throat, blood gushes out from the commander's neck, drowning out his final words. Tyrell points the bloody knife towards you, death to Kairos, death to the Archons. The moment Dastrus' body falls to the ground, the disfavored soldiers pounce forward, quickly reducing the Oathbreaker to a bloody mess. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dastrus' death will be a setback. He was a fine steward of this steadfast. Aurora swallows her lip, pursed in anger. But with the losses we've sustained this in this war, I'm the next in command. I will aspire to be half the leader Dastrus was. One of the soldiers found some mage blather on the Oathbreaker's aura holds up a rolled sheaf of parchment. I figured 
you being trained in letters could perhaps look down at the papers her Aurora looks down at the papers her face blushing and quickly thrusts the sheaf towards you examine the parchment repeating the same messages in different written scripts the parchment explains the Vendrian guards desire to overthrow Kairos as archons and route their armies from the tears the pages aren't addressed to any specific reader, but rather openly invites all who remain loyal to younger elves to gather at Vendrian's well. So it is a recruitment parchment. Recruitment parchment. Recruitment material. They were trying to bring more traitors to the fight. There were likely other groups trying to see flee the valley, but we can rest knowing we stopped this group. A shame it's at such a high cost. The Archons are expecting you at the disfavor of war camp. When you are ready to leave, exit by the southeast gate and keep going that way through the foothills. Can I loot this guy? Ooh, I can. Ooh, sigil of distant impact. Grain, what is this? Quick finger bangles. Right click for details. Haste plus one quickness. Might, might want to wear that. Uh, hone guard bronze falcs. Two-handed. Cool. Alright, and I guess we'll move on then. Uh, I do kind of want to... Is there a way to rest? Camping supplies. Four out of eight. Camping will remove all wo wounds. Oh, okay. So that's how you remove... Uh, yeah, let's rest. So I do want to remove all the wounds off my character. Okay, cool. So we're just going to have to pay more attention to... We're going to have to pay more attention to how we're handling dying and whatnot. Cosma and Aurora. Okay, so let's... Uh, Archon demands all prisoners be given a chance to serve the course. Uh, let's talk to Aurora here. The prisoner is from Tarkis clan. He's not just a, any Oathbreaker, he's one of their leaders. Aurora signals to her men by dragging her hand across her neck. No mercy for those who foment rebellion. Find a post and string him up. If his wounds don't kill him, thirst, starvation, and infection will do the rest. All must be given a chance to find absolution in service to the Scarlet Chorus. The mage points a finger at the disfavored officer. And you know full well this has always been our way. He has a chance to be a slave or a soldier. Only then do we feed him to the pigs. I tire of this nonsense. You keep recruiting these oathbreakers, then you fail to inflict order, and and they defect. And we have to fight them all over again. I will not let another one of these south knobs come back to haunt us. You have gained favor with the scholar, Scarlet Chorus. Uh, let's hear what the Fate Binder has to say. The blood. Chanter turns to you with a wide smile. My mates in the Blood Chanter guide tell me you were most supportive of our claims to the scrolls of the Vellum Citadel. Surely you understand that the Scarlet Chorus is wise enough not to squander any advantage you can take from it from the enemy. The Chorus should be allowed its chance to recruit new warriors. Eh, I guess. You have gained favor with the Scarlet course you've gained wrath with the disfavored if that's how you wish it the prisoner will go to the scarlet course but mark my words treating these curs with kindness has been and continues to be a mistake if it will calm your nerves i assure you this one won't be put on the battlefield the mage snaps her fingers loudly gesturing for her gang to listen make make sure the prisoner is taken straight to the voices of the rats no Voices of Miss Eve Parts, genius and man. Uh, okay. Aurora gives you a solemn nod. Until next time, Fate Finder, I know you have important business in this valley. No point in keeping you. She snaps to a salute for the glory of Kairos. Interesting. Okay, so that took care of that. Uh. Okay. Right. Who are you? Fatebinder, what an honor to have one of Tunon's court visit our humble holdfast. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm down on the top of the, the crate. If so, you've come to the right place. Uh, so what will it be today? She spreads out a 
welcome arm over her wares. How's trade? Well, this is a service posting. No profit up here in the passes. That's Hackard's bronze orders. But when we march out of the valley, I'm back on my own schedule. And here's to hop hoping this year is a good one. The overlord forbids the extortion of extortion of the pathway. It's a good thing too, because in the years past, I'd lose most of my profits. Couldn't turn a copper if I tried to haul long distances. Uh, let's see what you have. Okay, so these are... Okay, so if I right-click, I can get some information about the items that he's selling. Uh, what do I have? Lesser Staff, the Storm Hearts. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, okay. So if I right-click on whatever he's selling, I can kind of move those windows around. So that's pretty interesting. Okay. Uh... Let's see, what do I have? I have 72 copper rings. Uh, you know, I do kind of want one of these. And do I have anything worth trading to him? Uh, apparently not, which is weird. I guess I can't sell anything to him, so I might as well. No, let's just trade it anyway. Okay. That'll work. Oh, never mind. I can sell stuff to him. Hold on. Let's see what we can sell. Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to sell any of this yet. Actually, um, let's close that. Close that. Let me see. Inventory. Uh, let's open this party stash let's view everything uh, let me put you there what have you got you have weapons red rivers one handed so do I have any one handed items that could be better this is two handed and this is a one handed and thrown weapons Qual quality common uh, you know I kind of want to yeah, let's just get rid of all of that. So, hold on. Before I do that, I do want to give you the bangles for that give you haste. So at least you have some form of an upgrade as far as that goes. Soldiers use potions of protection to gird their natural resistance to injury. Okay. Alright, that'll be good enough. Okay, let's move onward then. I guess this way. What is this? Let us check this out. Climb the rope. You see a very old broken section of wall. There's a rope hanging down recently. You learn something every day. Found something. Interesting. Okay. So that was actually a secret. What is that? Items. Potion of invisibility. Sweet. We will happily take that. Alright, let's climb down. Okay, so that was a secret. Not a very good secret, because it has a huge icon on it. Uh, I don't suppose... Okay, so I guess we have to go this way? What is this? Oh, that just hides that. Okay, interesting. What is that? Hold on. What be this? Uh, how are you... Oh, okay, so... We're leaving the via this direction here interesting all right well let me see horde okay well you are not gonna really help let's see let's see what is in here can't Pro do that probably another rope that we can climb use the holes in the wall to climb it Can't do that. Locked. Need 39 subterfuge. Unfortunately, I don't have that. Wait. What about you? Nope, you don't have that either. Okay, well, let's climb down. Let's climb down and move on. I'm on it. Uh oh, what the hell? Uh. There you go. 
There it is. What is this? Hidden objects. You have discovered a hidden object. Many areas of Tataris have hidden traps or chests. When discovered, these objects will be highlighted for all your potty party to see. Level up. Your character has earned enough experience to advance in level. Oh. Uh, okay. You have unspent talent points. Uh, with each level... Level, you can increase one of your character's attributes. Might, finesse, quickness, wits, vitality, or resolve. Each of these attributes provide benefits to your character. Okay, done. Okay, so accuracy, vitality, resolve. Uh, subterfuge I needed at 36, so how do I know which one will... Let's see, dodge... Subterfuge. Uh, I guess quickness will be the subterfuge skill. Oh, okay, yeah. Ability and spell cooldown. Uh, you know what? We'll go ahead and throw one of those down right there and save. Actually, is, does one of these other ones boost to that one a little higher? Wits does. Wits does not boost it at all, actually. Uh, so we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do one point in there. Save. You. You don't have any upgrades. I do have... Ooh, talent points. Okay, there are six categories of talents available to your character. Leadership, events, power, uh, agility, range. Ooh. Uh, with each level, you gain one point to purchase a talent from any of these categories. Within a talent tree, each character tier of talents unlocks based on how many talent points you have spent within that tree to earn, learn a talent, select the icon, and then save button to confirm your choice. Each companion has their own talent trees with unique abilities. These abilities unlock in the same manner as your character's talents. As you spend points within a companion's talent tree, further tiers of talents become available. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. So we definitely want to do magic and possibly leadership. So let me see what we got here. Arcane Shards adds the Spell Breached Affliction to Thrust Attacks, also grants a bonus magic skills, a bonus to magic skills for a short time after using Thrust. Magical Prodigy grants a bonus to Lore Skill. Uh, charge Strike, charge up your magic staff and release. Okay, so I think we already have, do we have requires one to, oh, okay. Let me go ahead and Let's see. Let's do that for some lore skill. Save. Yeah. Why not? Cool. Awesome. I like it. Uh, let's go back here. Where's our lore at? 51? Holy crap. That was mag Magical Prodigy gave us 10 plus lore. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, got to definitely look into that. Okay. Let us move on. I guess this is the fast travel option. There's not much much else we can do in this area, so might as well. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Uh, what? My party is here. Oh god. What did I do? Uh, okay. Bastard City. Okay, so I guess we have to go to... Vendrian's well. Okay. There we go. So, we are at the Edgering Ruins. Uh, let's move on to the Disfavored Cat. This fort was constructed shortly after routing rebels along the valley's western edge. The Archon, Grave, and Ash directs all Disfavored efforts to this location. It will take you three hours to complete your journey from the Edgering Ruins to the Disfavored Cat. Continue. Some abilities allow party members to attack multiple times with basic attacks. Ooh, okay. I have to admit, um, I'm a little disappointed that some of this game, or a lot of this game, is not uh, voice acted. That is a little bit of a bummer, but not too terrible. Take what you can, but leave the cart, otherwise we seize you and your wares. Hail, Fightbinder. The disfavored scouts nods at your approach. Camp, Camps on up ahead. Don't mind us just clearing out the rabble. 
I still don't understand what I've done to offend. I respect these are now disfavored lands, and I am happy to give the Legion a proper toll, but she's going on about trading rights. What nonsense is that? I am not allowed to trade one thing for another. It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything of the sort. You're on disfavored land. These warriors have every right to kill you. You should be more thankful they're even listening to you speak. The Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your, your goods are forfeit. A trading permit. Well, how is I mean, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us, and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before Tunon, but we'll lighten your burden and relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek a bit more bearable. Uh... You had best start making a very strong argument as to why I should help you. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and the warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. If the fate binder wishes to weigh in on the matter, courtesy demands we listen. Clears her throat, looking at you expectantly. This is a disfavored matter, but I know the agents of the court do so love to throw their judgments around. Curious, I was just hearing about a supply caravan and agents going missing. Or what a what a coincidence! Your family recipe for wound paste smells just like the Scarlet Fury's own concoction. Where'd you steal this? <laughs> okay, well, well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today. The merchants, uh, or you can leave me alive and have f fermented honey all year long. I. Uh, 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 he uncorks a small ceramic vial in there. What a coincidence. I don't... The merchant tenses up and his face flushed red. I don't know what you're getting at. Mm, let's do ath athletics. How stupid do you think I am? Slow down. I'll tell you everything. Just don't hurt me. I found most everything out in the forest of the valley. I'd keep my head low when I heard s sounds of combat. Then I'd take... A look and grab whatever wasn't claimed by the first victors. So you stole from the disfavored's dead. Disfavored dead. How else did you get your hands on that iron? The scouts points to the ceramic cart. You would come here and sell us our own armaments? If anything has an owner, I will return it. But this iron would have turned to rust if left in the mud on the battlefield. Disfavored are few in number. Is that not right? You need a man like me to gather up supplies that would otherwise go to waste. but you will pay them handsomely for such charity. Leave this cart as a gift for the graven ash, and then leave and never come back. If you stole from the Archons and then wish to sell it back, your life ends here. You, you may trade your wares freely, but lie again and I'll have you killed. For the graven ash, and then leave and never come back. Thank you, Fatebinder. I know others of your ilk would gleefully meddle in our affairs at every opportunity. The soldier turns her attention to the merchant. I hereby reclaim these trappings of the Overlord for use of the disfavored. If you want to live, take two steps to your left and don't move a muscle. The peddler shakes his head with a scowl and steps aside as directed, spitting towards his own cart. Hargon mutters a half-garbled curse before placing his hands upon his sub submission. Sorry, buddy. But you lied to me. This is all your fault, you Kairos dog. Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over your tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. What's that? The voices of Narat told me you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story, so let's have it out. What's so special about you? Uh, I think I'm going to stick with the lore here. I'm actually tallying the expense of the siege. Is that all? I can understand why Tunan would worry himself over resources, but we have the riches of the Northern Empire backing this conquest, not to mention the plunder of the tears. If you say that's the case, I'll go along with it. Uh... 
at a loss for words, first regards you with a momentary unease. Well, are you ever surprised? He's the Archon's secret, knowing in advance his business so is snatching up any advantage over the grave, grave and Ash. Those two compete like a couple of new recruits for a spot around the fire. It's nothing nefarious. The voice, Voices is just curious at why you're here. If he wanted to know more, you wouldn't be able to suss it out easy, that easily. He would have sent one of his scariest peons in my stead. Why so suspicious? It's just a feeling I got. When the Archons are together, the air gets taut as a bowstring. I can't help but think that no amount of compromise will get them to see seeing eye to eye. Enough of this. I must meet, meet with the Archons. Hey, don't let me hold you back. I'm sure whatever you're doing here is important enough that you don't need me stepping in your path. The war tent is just past the center of camp. One last thing, be careful around these disfavored types. They take their work seriously and must ha most have suffered too many blows to the head. Yes. I uh, don't have enough subterfuge to do that. Who do we have here? Step closer and present yourself. The gate guard holds up a warning hand. Go no farther. You approach disfavored ground. State your business. Faint binder of Tunon, I bring word from Kairos. Words for your commander's ears. Ah, so you're the fire starter. Huh. Yeah, fire starter, I get it. Cause we lit that dang library on fire in the in the other thing. In the backstory section. Service and the companies returning from the burning library are telling some harrowing stories about Kairos' edict of fire. I think myself brave, but I'm happy to have been far away from it all. It must have been a terrifying honor to the messenger of such a righteous force. Go on in. Soldiers gestures towards the gate. The Archons are expecting you, and you'll find them in the war tent, center of camp. Addendum added. The Conqueror's Will. Uh, the Conqueror's Will. Uh, okay, cool. Let's keep going. Who are you, buddy? Pentabor, hail to you, guardian of the law. The man dressed in the merchant finery greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourselves before battle. If you know that, if if you, you know that if the disfavored suffer a merchant in their camp, that must be a man selling only the finest provisions and armaments. He points to his collection of shields, rations, satchels, wineskins, and other sundries. Take a look and see for yourself. Eh, I'm fine. I'm good. I don't need any of that. Uh, let's see. So I'm. So I guess these numbers next to our characters show what level they are. Uh, let's actually travel a little bit outside the camp. I do kind of want to see what's going on in this general direction. Perhaps we find something a little interesting over here. Okay, nope, just a fast travel point. It's fine. Alright, let's just keep going then. Let us keep on moving. Who are you? Rona? Let us see. Who are you? Bitter quip. Glory of the voices of Narad. Projecting his salutations for all to hear. The grinning blood chanter wraps his staff against the ground as you approach. Fate binders open, except for presume. His smile quickly retreats, giving way to a sour scowl. I am better quip. I am here at the emissary of the Scarlet Corps. Our bitter quip. Uh, what is it like working with the disfavored? What can you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus? Uh, he scoffs, looking away from you for a moment before sniffling and returning his attention to you. Reporting to the Iron Hang, Iron Hang is an insult. She fought one duel for her title. One, her leadership must be continuously proven, earned, and defended. Weakness should bleed to the bottom of the army and not rise to the top. 
uh, looking to you, you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus. The Chorus is the feature of the tears. I feel only derision and pity for those who fear our inevitable ascension. Uh, Bitter Quip looks at you with a raised eyebrow. What is, what in particular would you like to know? Uh, that's all for now. I, I don't need that much backstory. I kind of get it. Those two armies, they kind of don't like each other. The Archons await you inside. See that? Nice. Okay, so... <clears throat> thanks to my subterfuge skill, it allows me to... It allowed me to find that hidden crate, so that's actually pretty good. So if we have a chance, we'll definitely want to level that skill up. Uh, fatigue toxin. Cool. Uh... Don't quite... Okay, so that's as high as it allows us to go there. So let's go ahead and go inside here and see what, what's what in this camp. Yesterday you chide me for wishing to wait. Now you struggle an even longer delay. Okay. There's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with. His profile is made larger but still by his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secrets passes the scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. You hear the voices in your head. Well, hello there, Fate Binder. We'll be with you in just a moment. Okay, weird. Emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Remain silent. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. My lords, the Fatebinder has arrived. The disfavored commander raises her voice trying with little success to speak over the Archons. Perhaps we, should, we could table this discussion and let our guests speak. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? The Archon of Secrets twirls his scepters in a twisted loop, his leather-wrapped hands flip the heavy rod with an effortless flow. You hear the voices in your head. Can you hear us, Fatebinder? Coughing if we have... Cough if we have your attention. And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. The Archon of War lurches forward, resting his weight on his war maul as blue luminescence crackled around his armor. So this guy's sending messages straight to our brain so this guy can't hear it, so... Um, the Graven Ash can't hear it, so let's see how this plays out. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ash's Folly in your honor. Uh, good, good. No 
know, pay attention, you might miss something. Uh, catch it. Okay, the voice of Nart tosses his scepter in the air, catching it as it descends back down. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the tearsmen, Perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief. The Archon flips his scepter three times around, humming gleefully. Take care that you don't learn too much, Fateminder. An excess of knowledge of curiosity even can earn unwanted attention. Screw that. Hold your tongue. I will not have you denigrate the honor of our fallen brethren. The commander's hands moves... Uh, to the hilt of her blade. Though the weapon stays sheathed, I'd be doing us all a favor, a favor if I cracked open that excuse for a head. Fifth eye. They bicker like children, do they not? The fifth eye's granting tenor pierces the tension in the tent, and all lies land on the crimson spear. I uh, meant only to say, welcome, welcome to our guest, the fate binder. <laughs> Uh, the armored retainer bows with rushed in elegance, then rises to salute, and not a moment too soon. You have gained favor with the Graven Ash, and you have gained favor with this favored. Uh, crap. Governor Zophonix, long have we been honored by your iron, now we are honored by your presence. I must apologize for my lord's tempers run high of late. Bow to the Archons. Apologies for the sudden entrance. I traveled long to be here. Ah, the fire starter has arrived. Welcome, welcome. Our agents tell us such lovely stories of what you did at the Vellum Citadel. Have you come bearing another fragment of Kairos's wrath in tow? We were worried you'd never make it. So glad that Drostus' demise didn't cause further delay. Okay, the Archon of Secrets turns his attention toward you. The frozen Rictus, fashioned into a bronze mask, greets you with a permanent smile. How did you know about Drastus? I only just came from the Edring Ruins. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Are you all done bickering? I have an edict to proclaim. I come bearing an edict of Kairos. Once again, you bring us support in a time of need. We fondly remember your service to the Chorus in the taking of the Bastard City. We knew back then you were destined for great things. But we had not anticipated you would be twice honored with the task of proclamation. So, do not keep us waiting. What is the Overlord's will? Uh, let's see. The Overlord's loyal servants must hold... Ascension Hall by Kairos. It seems you need some encouragement to work together. Kairos' edict will end the lives of everyone in this valley unless Ascension Hall is claimed Kairos by Kairos a day of swords. In honor of your incompetence and disarray, the edict will execute every living thing in this valley unless Ascension Hall is taken. Okay, so basically we have to... The edict is that they have we everyone in this valley will die unless uh, we are victorious. Let's hold my Kairos' data swords are all in the valley shall perish. Okay. With the earth sways the earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrased commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens, and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountains, feel renewed. The tired limbs, now nearly buoyant with vigor. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. 
Well, we really. need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. The Archon of War taps a finger against his temple. A low rumble escapes under his beard. So you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft. Timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. The Archon of Secrets passes the scepter from one hand to the next, chuckling softly with each toss. Watch him squirm. So many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never be you'd never see blood echo in a blubbering mess over a few dead killers. He'd use the knuckle bones of his best disciples for jewelry and even made a breastplate out of his de out of his dead brothers. Okay. Uh, I'm starting to like you a lot lot less because you don't value you, your soldiers at all. So, you certainly. I second the fate binder. Thought you had the memories of one of those oath breakers rattling about that bronze gourd of yours. Would Kairos's mighty spy master please enlighten this gathering of allies with some scrap of strategic insight? The Archon of Secrets turns his head to the side until the face of his mask has turned around and a new facet of the mask presents itself facing forward. When the Archon speaks, the trembling voice of a younger man, man to be heard. Okay. Our river was to be the bulwark, but with the Tidecasters slain, what hope remains? It's so cold in here. Help me. Please. Hmm. The Archon turns his head far to the side until the previous facet of his mask now looks forward. Our sources tell us the Oathbreakers had some sort of magical trick in store. But this knowledge is tinged with fear, trepidation. If we make a move for the Matani, we suspect the Oathbreakers will mount a counterattack that is equal parts valiant and futile. That voice, who was it? That was Matani Yanev, former noble of Apex and one of the leaders of the Vendrian Guard. Back when they were half-respectable enemies that knew how to lose with dignity. When the Guard first surrendered, Yanev presented himself to us. What he knew, we now know. Okay. Our lives hang in the balance because you two bicker like children. Now go solve this problem you've started. No more sitting idle. I expected his favor to be on the march at once. The voices of Nara, I trust you are done acting the clown and will have your horde ready to march with haste. Hmm. Uh, okay. Let's see. So I can choose to s send the voices of Nara's army or the Graven Ash. Um... Let's see. So, let's see. So there's gonna be a trick. So I think we send the voices of Narat first. No, hold on, that's enough. There's work to be done. My Lord Barak and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. Fifth Eye, and I will ensure the Corps stands ready to march. The Disfavored can take take the river. The Corps has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse. We command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's Chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too... Well, I can't guarantee I won't do anything too stupid. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on his shoulder, and the two depart. Suit yourself, Fate Binder, the more, the more you ignore us.
Finally. The fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the Edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time, to help- If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. Iron Marshal. Okay. I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. I'm sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. Lord, the scar, how will they be helping? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley. I would be honored to help. Cool. The Iron Marshal salutes Graven, Graven Ash, then turns to leave the tents. I will be at the training grounds readying the soldiers. Find me there when you're ready. She pauses, clearing her throat. And though I am loath to mention it, the Chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the Outer Valley on their own. Uh, Fifth Eye will be somewhere in the Rat's Nest. They call a camp due east. Seek him out if you must. Uh, I don't quite trust the Scarlet Chorus. I think I'm tr more trusting of this favor now that I've met the eight da days to Kairos' Day of Swords. Okay, so in eight days we all die. So that's basically nice. Now that you have delivered... Word of Kairos Edict, the armies until uh, blah, blah, blah. days remaining until Kairos Day of Stort. Uh, the term of Kairos Edict must be met by this this date, or everyone in Venrian's well will die. Well, that's good to know. I can't talk to yes. you. Yes. Okay, so let's get out of here. Okay, so there is a day-night cycle in this game, and now there's pressure to get this done. So. I mean, I'll say this about Kairos, he, he's got an effective way to uh, get people to do shit, so. Okay, so that being said, I believe we're gonna call it an episode here, and we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to get moving on this uh, order from Kairos. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try to get moving on that. So, before I send, it, send us off here on this episode, um, I think we're going to give this one a solid 8 instead of an 8.5 this time. Um, I like the story aspects of the game. I don't like... I really don't like that some of the game is not voice acted. Like, all the major characters are voice acted, but other than that, there's not too many, uh, there's not too many uh, major voice acting done in this game. So it's kind of kind of disappointing but at the same time i can understand why because games like this are tend to be massive in terms of branching storylines and paths so you can't really voice act everything but that being said i'll give this this episode a solid eight so that being said we got an eight and a half on the first episode eight on this episode and i believe that is it so far and like I said, I will be keeping track of all of those scores on my own, and then at the end, we will be averaging that. So uh, until then, uh, my name is Elfnex, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Later, leave a like and subscribe.